Yes, welcome to DAP 202. This is principles of ethnopharmacology and toxicology. In this part, we shall be summarizing about ethnopharmacology. We shall be summarizing about toxicology. When you speak about ethnopharmacology, it is a scientific discipline that deals with traditional knowledge, traditional beliefs, and culture to understand which particular medicinal plants are used to treat which particular disease. Therefore, as a learning outcome, we must understand the various medicinal plants that are used to treat various diseases. Then in toxicology, toxicology we define it as a science that studies adverse effects that are caused by chemical or physical agents on an organs. Therefore, in toxicology, we shall be interested in knowing the various chemical or physical agents. For example, like poisons or toxins that affect our livestock. For example, we have medicinal plants, then we have poisonous plants. So in toxicology, we need to know which poisonous plants affect our animals. Advantages of ethanol is that it is cheap because these medicinal plants are within our localities. But the disadvantage of ethanol is that it's mainly about the safety and efficacy of these medicinal plants. Yes, we can know a particular plant that treats a particular disease, but knowing the right dose it is always a problem. Remember, if you exceed the dose, we can also cause it toxicity. Therefore, it is a major key research area for us to understand the various, the various do right dosages of those medicinal plants. That's all about the brief introduction about ethnopharmacology. So we can talk about a brief topic about ethnopharmacology, which we call, as, we call it sources of natural drugs. Sources of natural drugs are basically seven, there are basically seven sources of natural drugs, with the major source being plants. We find that most of the, of the drugs are coming from, from plant as their source. With an example of quinine, quinine is coming from a plant that we call as we call it as chinchona officinale, and it's a, a native tree in Peru. Then we have artemisinin, which is commonly known as cotam. Cotam treats also, it's an antimalaria, but it's also coming from a plant that we call as artemisia annua. We have other plants like salix alba, which is the white willow bark. With the white willow bark, we get a drug that we call as aspirin, and I believe that most people have used aspirin. Some other drugs that we use that are from plant source, we have digoxin from digitalia. We have atropine coming from atropa belladonna and others. So it, in, the, in ethanol, you must understand those various medicinal plants. Then the other source of drugs with animals, we find like bees, bees provide us with honey and honey has antibacterial properties. Therefore, animals are also part of sources of natural drugs. We have algae, we have microorganisms. For example, fungi. With fungi, you can use an example of penicillin G, which is the drug we commonly call it as penicillin. So it was obtained from a fungi. We see that also fungi, fungi or microorganisms are also part of sources of natural drugs. We have bacteria like, like tetracyclines, are also coming from bacteria. Then we have the other sources about, we don't have plant cultures. For example, like vanillin coming from vanilla. Those are basically some of the examples of the plant sources. Then we can speak about how do we classify these natural drugs. We classify natural drugs in two ways. They can either be crude, they can either be organized crude drug or an organized crude drug. For example, if we pick a, a particular plant, a, pla a particular plant, part of a plant to treat, then you have picked a crude drug. For example, if you pick a leaf, or if you pick a stem, or you pick a bark, then that, that's your, what your picture is, you see? We term it as an organized crude drug, because you're picking a particular morphology of a plant. Then we have what we call as unorganized. With unorganized, you're picking a plant, then maybe you squeeze. For example, like for aloe vera, when you pick it, then you squeeze the juice. That juice makes it to be an organized crude drug. That's all about one way you could classify these natural drugs, depending on the morphology. The other way we could, we could classify natural drugs based on either alphabetical classification. With that, we either we look at either the English name, the local name, or the Latin name. For example, we have an example of mango. Mango is known to treat cases of, of diarrhea or the GIT. With mango, if you classify it in terms of alphabetical, English name is mango tree, then scientific name or Latin name, we call it mangofera indica. Then in local names, 
you have other local names that you give to mango. Other tree could use maybe Nim tree. Nim tree Nim would be the English name, as the Shita Indica would be the Latin name. Then you also know your local name that you give that particular plant. Then the other way we could classify natural drugs is chemical classification. With chemical classification, we look at the particular chemical that a plant contains. That's why we that's then we could classify them according to chemical classification. We have pharmacological classification, classifying these medicinal plants based on their pharmacological role, like their therapeutic role. We could classify them as antimalarials, those ones which are work on the cardiac system like that. Then we have the taxonomic. With taxonomic, it's mainly restricted to plant to medicinal plants. We classify the drug based on the it's a taxonomy, like the kingdom, the genus, the species. That's basically it is somehow simple. And this is this is more, it's commonly used. Then that's we have what we call this hero taxonomic classification. That's all about that particular topic. Then we can talk how do we prepare a medicinal plant? Because you can, after you conduct what you call a ethnobotanical survey, you must understand how do you prepare that particular plant for identification in the barium. When you go to the community and you find out which particular drug, which particular plant today you use to treat a particular disease, you must pick that particular plant sample, then you prepare it for identification. With that, you must ensure that you collect the plant on the right hours during harvesting. You must have right tools then like parking it to avoid it from direct sunlight because it affects it. Then after you go, then you remove excess leaves. After you remove the excess leaves, you now press it. When you press it, you apply pressure. Then you keep it for two to three weeks. After, after two to three weeks, you can now again come and mount it on a mounting paper, which is always like put it to by 26.5 centimeter. That's like the, the sheet where you mount it. After you mounted it, then we have to transport it to the herbarium. Within the herbarium, that's where we can now identify that particular species that we have collected. That's all about that particular topic. The other topic in medicinal plants, in ethnopharmacology, is now talking about these medicinal plants. You see that diverse medicinal plants treat various diseases. Some, some, have, some treat parasites, both external and internal. Others treat specific diseases. In that, you must understand which particular plants play those particular roles. You must understand the plant, its scientific name, botanical name, then the active ingredient. For example, you can talk about these common, common plants that, that treat worms. Like we have red pepper, we have garlic, we have neem tree, we have, so we have many. Then we have plants that treat various diseases. We have tobacco, we have mango, fera indica, we have Hysonia abyssinica, it's really much, and with that, you always go to the attached manual, read more about that. Then we can talk about how do you extract this natural, how do you extract the drug? Because have, after you have known that this is the active ingredient, this particular plant, you must now go and extract. With extracting, we look at two methods, which are broad. We have the conversional methods, then we have the nanny conversional methods. With conversional, we have, we have maceration, which is common in our area. You get a drug, you put it into a, a stopper, into a closed vessel, then you steer, then after you keep it for three to seven days. Then after you now keep the fil you filter, and then you keep the filtrate, then the plant which you call as a mark. Then the other method, which is conversion, is the percolation, where we use a percolator. We also have decoction, we have infusions, we have tinctures, we have digestion, those are all methods under conversion. Then in, then in non-conversion, we have, we have we have what you call as MAE, which is microwave assisted extraction. We have supercritical fluid extraction. We have the ultrasonic assisted extraction. Those are all methods. We have fraction. Then the other, the other method, which is conversion, is the succulent. Where we use succulent extraction. We call it succulent extraction. We use the anapetus called succulent. That's basically how we extract the drug. So you must understand that particular part practically. Then after you have known how to extract, you must go and purify and isolate those particular drugs. With purification, we use chromatography. In chromatography, we use various types of chromatography. We have the thin layer chromatography, we have HPLOC, we have gas chromatography, we have others, we have like chrome chromatography. So you must also understand that. Then after you have known that, you must understand how do you register a, 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 a natural product for veterinary use in Uganda. So there are various steps that you must follow before you publish your 
drug. For example, like you said, in 2020, we had cases of COVID by Professor, one professor to develop Jenna. Professor Jenna had, developed, had to come up with a product that treats, a natural product that treats COVID. So you must understand those steps that you follow. Then lastly, you must understand, you must conclude, you must conclude with, 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 with that. So that's basically the talks that we shall be discussing, you know, that we have discussed within that period of Western pharmacology. Summarize to understand the various terms that are within toxicology, that are used in toxicology. So you shall understand the various poisonous plants that are within our environment, because these plants affect our livestock. You shall understand about what we call as the inorganic poisons in mycotoxicosis. Then finally, we should have a brief part about it. toxicology. Toxicology, we define it as a science that deals with studying advanced effects that are caused by chemical or physical agents on an organism. For example, a poison and a toxin are toxicants. Therefore, in toxicology, we will study how these poisons and toxins cause advanced effects. For example, you know that poisons cause death. So in toxicology, we will study how does a poison cause death. A toxin is a toxicant which is produced by either bacteria or a plant or another organism. For example, we now we have snake venoms. Snakes, snakes produce venoms which are toxic or they produce toxins. We can use examples of bacteria like Cosidium chove. We can use an example of, of Cosidium tentan. We have botulinum. Those are all those are all caused by toxins caused by bacteria. Then a poison is a substance that can cause advanced effect when taken in small quantities. Then you have what you call as a dose. A dose is just like that particular amount that can cause an advanced effect. So you must know a particular dose. We have what you call as effective dose. We have the lethal dose. We have the toxic dose. When you have LOD50, we have TD50, like that. You shall understand all those terms. Then we only briefly speak about poisonous plants. These plants are always found within our farm localities. But there are circumstances that may result in two, in two our animals eating those poisonous plants. For example, sometimes it could be accidental. Whereby, for example, you prepare your hair, then maybe you cut a certain poisonous plant. When you take it, when you feed your animals, they will always be affected. For example, we have cases whereby in horses, where you make hair. When you mix the hair with this, that was from ammonia, then that we shall have toxicity. Then we have cases where by animal they would eat these poisonous plants deliberately when they have no option. This is especially like in dry season. So you must understand these circumstances. Then you must understand how do we manage, how, how do we treat these cases of toxicity. Because toxicity could either be acute or chronic, depending on the time. And it could be depending on the exposure. What you need to know about toxicology is that we deal with two terms. We have two terms. We have toxicokinetics. Then we have toxicodynamics. Toxicokinetics, we talk about how does the body deal, how, what, what the body does to the body, to the toxin. What the body does to the toxin is what we call as toxicokinetics. In toxicokinetics, we deal with four things. One is absorption. How is that particular toxin or poison absorbed? Two, what we call as distribution. How is that toxin or poison, how is it distributed within the body? Then three, we talk about the metabolism. Those toxins could either be metabolized or could not be metabolized. Sometimes you find that even during metabolism, it becomes even more toxic. Then lastly, we talk about excretion. That is all about toxicokinetics. Then in toxicodynamics, we talk about what the, the toxin does to the body. And with that, we always talk about the mode of action of that particular toxin. 
you find that we have almost 200 over over 200 toxins but each toxin has its own toxicity has its own mode of action therefore you must understand when you talk about poisonous plants around the farm we can just list some but you go and read the others because they are under that particular topic the common some of the common poisonous plants we have lantana camara lantana camara is a tick bed that causes photosensitization we have the trust to ammonium we have tobacco it contains nicotine and affects the acetyl choline then we have rati we, we call it as abras it has red seed it is, it's a black and red seed it's called rati we have phytolacca do decandra we have other toxins there are really many plants that are toxic we have sorghum sorghum is also contains nicot contains nitrates which are converted into nitrates and they will cause toxicity. We have cassava. Cassava contains also toxins, which are basically contains hydrogen cyanide, which are also toxic. It also contains linamarin. We have plants like euphobia. Euphobia also contains it. toxins. It's also toxic. Therefore, and there are really many, many poisonous plants. So we must know those, each and each particular poisonous plant. We must know the particular toxin. Then we must know the mode of action of that particular toxin. Then we are interested in knowing how do we treat those poisonous plants. Then we can talk about briefly the last topic, which is mycotoxicosis. Mycotoxicosis, these are fungi that cause what we call as mycotoxicosis. For example, of, mycotox of a mycotoxin, we have these aflatoxins, which are, aflatoxins are more prominent in cereals, like maize bran, than the G-nuts. Whenever we feed our animals with mycotoxins, we shall end up having the 